God of Awesome. Okay, God of War 3. I have to say, uh, of the big games that have been coming out this year, it was Mass Effect 2 and God of War 3 that had me like the most like kind of tear my hair out. I want to play this game so badly. Um, reviews up on the site. Give it a 5 out of 5. Uh, I want to give a, a note because I've been handing out some very nice scores as of late. I did not intend to review God of War 3. I had a copy uh, two weekends ago, and I also happened to have laryngitis, and so I had a lot of time in my hands, and so I was excited to just be playing the game. Um, ironically, I finished the game uh, a week ago Sunday at 3.55, right before 4 p.m., which would have been the point that I could no longer have been able to play God of War 3, which unfortunately happened to uh, the intended reviewer here on the staff. And so when I came in on Monday, I was the only guy that had actually gotten to the end, and so it fell to me to present the assessment. Uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, the game is absolutely awesome, and one of the things that I found so impressive with this game, which is something I found very impressive with Uncharted 2, is its sense of pacing. I thought the game was really short. I thought the game was under 10 hours. And then I did the math in my head of how long I actually had sat down playing it, and it was 12 plus hours, probably because I was an idiot and got stuck on the final boss because I couldn't figure out exactly what the obvious thing the game was telling me to do to beat the boss. Um, it flew by, and I think that is one of the strongest things that you can have in a video game. And we are seeing more and more games that seem to have this delectable pacing. And the way that I can tell when a game has good pacing is A, I, you know, don't eat as much, I don't talk to other people, I'm just sitting there playing the game, and the one big litmus test is on a Saturday or a Sunday morning, if I very quietly get up, step over my wife, make the coffee, and then run in at 6.30 in the morning to sit down in my underwear and play the game. I had that uh, effect when I played Uncharted 2, same thing happened with, with, with God of War 3. Um, to have great pacing in a game, I think, is actually one of the most challenging arts that you can find in video game development. I mean, back in the old days, it just seemed like, hey, if we just have a lot of game in here, that's good. And I believe even Cliff Blazinski himself would say that in the original Unreal, it could have had probably five hours taken out of it, and you would have had a, a brisker and a briefer uh, and a more enjoyable experience. Um, to get that sense that everything is changing, and that's perfectly, what's happening perfectly in God of War 3, that what's happening around each corner, you, you don't seem to know, and that's what's driving me to say, like, I, 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 I gotta see what's over there. Another thing that God of War 3 does that I don't see as much in God of War 2 or the original God of War is, there's no predictable sense of pace. I don't know when the level is going to end or if that means I'm necessarily going to have a boss battle. There's a couple of boss battles that happened in God of War 3 that happened exactly when I was not expecting it. And that sense of shock, that, that sense of awe that happens is one of those things where, ah, I'm going to put another two hours in this game because i got to see what's happening next. It, it, it's so wonderfully surprising in that, but the most important aspect, I think, that gives it that sense of pace is because those controls are so amazing. They were good in God of War 1, they were good in God of War 2, but there is almost a frightening level of precision in how you use not just the Blades of Exile, but all three other weapons that you have in the game. And that sense of feedback, a lot of developers talk about that, that sense of a feedback loop, that I'm hitting a button and I'm getting something to happen and it's telling me that I'm awesome and I'm feeling really good, so I'm going to hit that button so I can do something awesome again. It never lets up. And that's what makes it so compulsive and so easy to sit down there and play it again. Again, A lot of people talk about the replayability of a game. That to, uh, you know, how many times can I play it? Are, are, are there reasons I should go back maybe on a different difficulty setting or, you know, the extend the game through some sense of multiplayer? I think God of War 3 is one of the best examples that good replayability comes from a good game. The minute I finished playing God of War 3, all I wanted to do was play it again. You just have almost that sense memory in the muscles of your hand and you want to kind of go through those wonderfully sublime motions over and over and it really fits that to a T. So uh, obviously congratulations to the team at Sony Santa Monica. Uh, it really is an amazing achievement. I cannot wait to see what you guys are doing next. I have no idea if it's gonna be another God of War. All I know is you have a game style that is so well honed, it doesn't need to be in the Greek mythos. You can just slap it into any other world. You would have me there enjoying myself, and I think that stands true for most other gamers out there. Hey guys, as you hopefully know, this is the week of the Game Developers Conference, and myself and many other of the hardworking men here at G4 will be up in San Francisco where it will be cold and cloudy to cover a lot of awesome stuff coming out of the Game Developers Conference. You're gonna see a lot of games, 
going to be shown off. Obviously, some very intelligent people in the industry. We will be chatting with them. We'll hear, see some write-ups on interesting panels. We'll talk about games that have already come out or maybe haven't come out yet. Uh, also, the big one is there is a Sony press conference. We do not know what's happening, but we have the feeling it might be fairly significant. And we are going to be streaming it live, and that's going to be at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, obviously 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be on our website. Obviously, uh, we're excited about it, so you should be excited about it, too, and hopefully you can join us to, to, to watch it as we're watching it. If you want to see that press conference, go to g4tv.com slash Sony GDC, and then you can watch it there. Obviously, if you miss it at 4 p.m., you can probably, you know, I know you can catch it at 5 p.m., 6 p.m., the following day, the following week. It should be very, very exciting, and I imagine there will be a lot of yammering from me and Patrick Klepik and Andrew Fister about the things that we're going to learn up there, so check it out. Hey, I'm Adam Sessler, host of X-Play and editor-in-chief on G4TV.com, inviting you to check out our weekly web show, Feedback. It is myself, Abby Happy, Patrick Klepik, and a revolving third chair to have an intelligent, informative, and very, very humorous discussion about games, what happened in the past week, the big titles that are coming out, and anything else that you, the viewer, comes to mind and sends us through our website, G4TV.com. So, yes. That's feedback. I encourage you to watch it. You'll feel smarter as a result of it. You can catch it on G4TV.com going up every Wednesday, but up all week long.